The Scum Villain's Self-Saving System by Mo Xiang Tong Xiu Read by Reitler Chapter 7 The Water Prison Part 2 Shen Qingqiu had learned that whenever he tried to meditate or clear his mind, there was always some form of outside disruption. For example, that time in the Lingxi Caves, and now again in the water prison. The stone path rose and the corrosive water curtain stopped flowing. Gong Yi Shao hurried down the path. With only a glance at Shen Qingqiu, his feet slipped out from under him. S -s Senior Shen, you... he stammered. What about me? Shen Ting Tio had no idea what was wrong. Gong Yi Xiao had a strange look on his face, like he didn't know whether he should turn on his heel and retreat. He hesitated on the edge of the stone platform without continuing further. Following his gaze, Shen Ting Tio looked down. That robe, isn't it? Gong Yi Xiao said hesitantly. Shen Ting Tio sighed. Luo Bing He's out her robe. Gong Yixiao finally reacted. He coughed shortly, then asked, "'How has Senior Shen been these past two days?' Shen Tingzhou replied, "'All right. If he wasn't so popular, he'd have been even more all right. Within the span of two days, three people had already visited. This luxury VIP's single room, in which he was temporarily detained, must be the hottest, most popular suite in the history of Huanhua Palace's water prison.' I heard that yesterday Luo Shishong was in a terrible rage when he left. This junior was worried he might have done something to Senior Shen. As Gong Yi Shao spoke, his eyes involuntarily drifted back to the black outer robe. Under his stare, Shen Ting Zhou found himself pulling the robe tighter over his chest. Done what? Luo Bingha had only thrown a tantrum and punched holes all over the place, collapsing half the cave. What's with that look in your eyes? Shen Ting Chou sighed. Luo Bingha has really taken to Huan Hua Palace like a fish to water. Gong Yi Xiao smiled bitterly. Not only that, Luo Shishong's spiritual power is outstanding, his conduct unwavering, and his actions swift and decisive. Everyone else is left in the dust, so it's no wonder Shi Sun regards him so highly. If Liu Shishong wasn't so insistent on not taking Shizun as his master, I'm afraid I would never have a chance of becoming head disciple. Sincere sympathy seeped into the gaze Shen Xing Tio sent towards him. This junior came to see you about a more important matter, Gong Yi Shao said resolutely. This morning, Peak Lord Shang requested an authorization pass from my master, but his application was delayed, and he doesn't know when he'll be able to get through. He seemed to have some pressing business, and he asked this junior to bring a letter. As he spoke, he reached into his lapel. Fuck, it really was a letter, and it was only hastily folded twice, without even a wax seal or a sealing spell. Shang Qinghua, how daring! Please relax, senior, I've already looked through it, said Gong Yi Xiao. Then relax my ass. However, I couldn't understand what it said. Shang Qingzhou let out an external sigh of relief. Good. It looked like he'd misunderstood. Shang Qinghua wouldn't fuck up that badly. In all likelihood, he'd used a secret code, or there would be nothing to fear if someone did intercept it. Shang Qingzhou shook open the paper with two fingers. After skimming it, his face turned green. After reading two lines, his face turned white. All sorts of colours bloomed and intertwined over his cheeks in a lively display. He was speechless. This letter was written in English. No, not quite that. It was written in error-ridden Chinglish. The grammar was entirely Chinese, and any word Shang Qinghua didn't know was replaced by its pinyin equivalent. Great master, aeroplane shooting towards the sky. Did you not consider? What if I can't understand your shit here, English? After puzzling his way through the general gist of the thing, Shen Qingqiu directed some energy into his hand. The paper broke into fragments and fell to the floor like June snow, exactly resembling his current tumultuous mental state. As it turned out, it was he who had underestimated Great Master, aeroplane shooting towards the sky. Four peerless cucumbers' eyes only. Everything is set and the preparations are complete. The location has not changed. It's just there was a small mishap with the time. 
In order to make the sun, moon, dew mushroom mature as soon as possible, I fixed up a little something to promote its maturation, but I accidentally overdid it. Right now, it's as mature as it will ever get, and it will rot in no more than a week. So, I hope you can leave Juan Hua Palace's water prison as soon as possible. Don't worry, it was only a bit of something like chemical fertiliser, so there shouldn't be any difference when you use the mushroom. Probably. This wasn't just going off recipe. Did the concept of recipes even exist for this guy? He'd used chemical fertiliser to ripen that all-natural, unpolluted life form. Fertiliser. There shouldn't be any difference when you use it. Was the sort of guarantee as trustworthy as the ones from used car salesmen. Gong Yi Xiao looked around. Senior, are you done reading? If you are, please toss the letter into the lake to destroy it. Actually, yesterday, Liu Shushong gave us orders not to allow anyone but him to enter. I must leave as soon as possible, so as to avoid being discovered and causing more complications. Xian Xingqiu grabbed Gong Yi Xiao. Do me a favour, Gong Yi Xiao responded. Go ahead and ask, as long as I... Shen Tingzhou didn't wait for him to finish saying am able before he sincerely asked, Let me out. Gong Yi Xiao was silent until he said with difficulty, Senior, I really can't do that. I have a reason to insist, Shen Tingzhou said solemnly. I swear that I don't intend to flee from the trial. After finishing my affairs, I will return to the water prison of my own volition to await judgment. If you don't trust me, we can take a blood oath. One could not renege on a blood oath. But in truth, after seeing to these affairs, it wouldn't matter whether Shen Tsing Chou returned to Huan Hua Palace's water prison, so he was in fact running a scam. I certainly trust Senior, but wasn't detention in the water prison primarily your request? Gong Yi Xiao said awkwardly. Exactly what could be so critical that you would absolutely have to leave? If you're willing to explain, I can report to the sect leaders and seniors participating in the investigation. Shen Tsingqiu was having some second thoughts. Gong Yi Xiao was a Huanhua Palace disciple, and abetting the escape of a prisoner would be no small sin on any head it laid upon. This was an upstanding youngster. Throwing him to the wolves would be rather unkind. Within this seven-day limit, there was bound to be more opportunities. Therefore, he changed his tone. Forget it. It wasn't anything serious. As he spoke, he struggled to collect all the paper fragments on the ground before tossing them into the lake to destroy the evidence. Because most of his body was bound by immortal binding cables, movement was immensely difficult. After he shifted a couple of times, the black robe slid off his body. Gong Yi Xiao had originally bent down to help, but when he saw the black robe cast aside on the ground, he unintentionally looked up. His arms and legs went rigid at the sight. Shen Tsingqiu looked at him in askance. The white garment on his body had been ripped clean from his shoulder. It was obvious at a glance that someone had violently torn it apart with their bare hands. In addition, fragments of fabric that looked like they had been shredded by her whip had been left hanging from what remained. More than a few pale red scrapes were evident on the fair skin exposed by the damage— if one looked closely, they would also detect the faint traces of bruises on his neck that had yet to fade. Gong Yi Xiao received a devastating shock to his world view. Senior, you... are you sure you're all right? he asked in a trembling voice. No wonder Luo Bingha had forbidden anyone but him entering the water prison, even if they had an authorization pass. Why, he'd even confiscated Peak Lord Shang's application— so it was like this, an insubordinate disciple, devoid of conscience, worse than a beast. Gong Yi Xiao inwardly cried tears of blood for Senior Shen. As for himself, Shen Tsingqiu said blankly, Yes, I'm all right. Gong Yi Xiao was shaken. How, how could Senior Shen have such a tranquil expression, even in a moment like this? Shen Tsingqiu finished tossing all the paper fragments into the lake. You shouldn't take the words I just said to, now to heart. You, Gong Yi Xiao, suddenly stood up, turned around, and left. Shen Jing Zhou's face filled with black lines. I said you shouldn't take it to heart, and you just up and leave. Isn't that a bit too brusque? But before an hour had passed, 
Gong Yixiao returned again, carrying something in his hand. He walked over to Shen Ting Tio, unwrapped the seals binding that object, and slashed downward. With a white flash, the bindings around Shen Ting Tio's body abruptly loosened, and it felt like an electric circuit had been reconnected. He stretched his fingers. His spiritual energy was unmistakably back in operation and flowing smoothly. When he'd been imprisoned, he'd been in the middle of a random, without a cure, flare-up. But after two days of being tied up by the immortal binding cables, the poison had unexpectedly been suppressed again. Was this following the same principle as fighting fire with fire, or how two negatives make a positive? The immortal binding cables fell to the ground in pieces. Gong Yixiao tossed over the object in his hands, and Shen Ting Zhou reached out to catch it. Xu Ya. Holding the sword again, Shen Ting Zhou was overjoyed and astonished. He looked over at Gong Yixiao. I thought this was supposed to be with the old palace master. Even if I risk being punished by my master, this junior cannot sit back and remain stoic while senior is disgraced. Gong Yixiao said righteously, I trust you, senior Shen. Please follow me. Shen Ching Chiu was involuntarily overcome by a sense of helplessness. What is this? I keep feeling like he seems to have misunderstood something very important, but forget it. This is fine. All right, Shen Ching Chiu said resolutely. Sure, the heavenly demon blood was still dormant within his body, and wherever he ran, Luo Binghe would always be able to locate him. But that knowledge didn't matter so long as Luo Binghe couldn't. Chase him there, senior. You, can you walk? Gong Yixiao asked, deeply worried. Do you need me to carry? With a dark expression, Shen Ting Chiu took a decisive stride and marched forward, using this action to prove that he could indeed walk and walk very briskly at that. Gong Yixiao started, then promptly followed close behind. Unexpectedly, when they stepped off the surface of the stone platform and onto the path. The water curtain that had been raised rumbled overhead, and water gushed down. Shen Ting Chiu, who had been running quickly, also braked quickly, lest he take the spray head on. He stepped back onto the stone platform along with Gong Yu Shao, and the water curtain gradually stopped. It was basically deliberately stopping them from leaving. Wasn't this bit of design a bit too intelligent? Gong Yu Shao suddenly understood. I forgot. Once the water prison has been activated, there must always be someone on the stone platform. If this person leaves, or there isn't enough weight on the platform, the water curtain automatically reactivates, even if the mechanism has been shut off. In the past, he'd never had any experience with helping a prisoner escape, so naturally he hadn't remembered this. In other words, one person has to be left on the stone platform before the others can leave. Shen Ting Chou asked. Gong Yi Shao nodded. And you stay here. Gong Yi Shao was silent. Shen Ting Zhou shook out his sleeves and headed towards the path. Behind him, Gong Yi Shao weakly raised his hand. Senior Shen, even though I am most willing to serve, if you don't have me to lead the way, I'm afraid you won't be able to get out. Um. Shen Ting Zhou looked back and added, "Wait for me to return." Gong Yi Shao stood in place, stupefied. He had a mind to follow, but was hindered by the fact that he had no way to leave the stone platform, so he could only stand there and wait. A short while later, he heard a muffled sound from outside, and Shen Ting Chou walked back up, dragging a person by the back of their collar. Shen Ting Chou hauled the still unconscious, pock-faced disciple onto the stone platform, patted Gong Yi Shao on the shoulder, and said, "I happened to see this one on patrol and borrowed him for a bit. Let's go." In reality. He hadn't just happened to see him. There had been four people on patrol. Shen Ting Zhou had secretly hidden himself, and only after careful selection had he grabbed this mouthy fellow. Just now, it had also occurred to Gong Yi Shao to grab a random disciple to use as a weight, but the idea had flashed by only indistinctly. Now that Shen Ting Zhou had done it himself, meaning there was no need for Gong Yi Shao to personally knock out a fellow disciple, he breathed a sigh of relief. As they once more headed towards the outside, shoulder to shoulder, he saw Shen Ting Zhou draw the black robe draped around his shoulders tighter, and a lump welled in his throat. He could only feel agonized. He was already reluctant to see Shen Ting Zhou, the leader of a pique, be imprisoned and humiliated. 
Yet now Shen Tsingqiu needed to depend on a piece of clothing from the one who'd assaulted him to cover his body and conceal the marks of that humiliation. How could he not lament in distress? Shen Tsingqiu saw Gong Yi Xiao's expression flicker. It looked like sympathy, but also indignation. He could only face turbulence with tranquillity, and he kept his expression blank. Out of nowhere, Gong Yi Xiao said, Senior, please take it off. Shen Tingqiu stared. Huh? Without waiting for him to recover, Gong Yi Xiao had already began taking off his own outer robe. Shen Tingqiu was just considering whether he should toss a spiritual blast at Gong Yi Xiao to try and return him to his senses when Gong Yi Xiao offered him his outer robe that he'd removed with both hands. Please wear this. Shen Tingqiu suddenly understood. Oh, so that was what he meant. Luo Binghe's clothes were black, but the clothes themselves matched the person. Like the male lead himself, they were sophisticated, luxurious, yet understated. Obviously, Gong Yi Xiao disapproved. Wearing such a robe would only draw attention, but changing into a white robe that looked like it could belong to anybody would be more advantageous to their chances of escape. Such attention to detail! Shen Tingzhou resolutely removed Luo Binghe's robe and changed into Gong Yi Xiao's. Before leaving, he thought for a moment, then took the time to fold Luo Binghe's robe. Only after this did he place it on the ground. Navigation wasn't particularly difficult upon first leaving the water prison, but the further they walked, the more Shen Tingzhou came to appreciate that Huan Hua Palace's maze array was indeed exceptionally terrifying. They travelled through cave after cave, path intersecting with path, and every couple of steps they'd circle around and around to the point that it made his head spin. Despite walking so close to Gong Yi Xiao's back, Shen Tsing Xiao almost lost him quite a few times. If Gong Yi Xiao hadn't known the assignments and schedules of the water prison staff like the back of his hand, who knew how many disciple guard patrols they would have run into? After an hour, they finally made it out of the underground water prison. They walked many kilometers more without stopping, and entered Bailu Forest, until they were about to cross the border of Huan Hua Palace's territory. The water prison's alarm had yet to sound, meaning that no one had yet discovered the prisoner was gone. Luo Binghe's order forbidding all others from visiting the water prison had inadvertently greatly aided Shen Tsing Chou's escape. After a short rest, Shan Tsing Chiu said, Young Master Gong Yi, after this point you needn't stay to send me off. Hurry back now while we're still undetected. After a pause, he added, Within seven days, go to Hua Yu City. You'll definitely find me there. If that's the case, I won't accompany you any further, Gong Yi Shao said, even though I don't know what Senior intends to do about these future concerns, please be careful. And Senior, please don't worry about the sect's trial next month. It's as you said, those clean will remain clean no matter what. The sect leaders will obviously exonerate you. Unable to help himself, Shan Ting Chiu laughed. First, his dark history was set in stone and couldn't be erased. Second, the trial next month had fuck all to do with him. Ha <laughs> ha He immediately cupped his hands, carefree and satisfied. May we meet again? The road from Huan Hua Palace's border to Hua Yue City ran through the most densely populated and economically developed stretch of the central plains. This also meant that an especially large number of secular cultivation sects and influential families were located within the area. Cultivators of this world highly valued aerial defense. Like in Jinlan City, they often set up aerial defense barriers over their territories. If an immortal sword or spiritual artifact flew through it above the speed limit, it would undoubtedly be discovered and reported to the sect's higher-ups. Obviously travelling in this way would be like bombastically broadcasting his escape trajectory via megaphone. Shen Tsingqiu flew part of the way and walked another without rest until he finally arrived at Hua Yue City the following night. His arrival timing was terribly unfortunate, as a festival celebrating the establishment of Hua Yu City was in full swing. The city was adorned with coloured lanterns and would be brightly lit the entire night. Soaring dragons and lion dancers filled the streets. 
the drums and music thunderous, people were packed together, vendor next to vendor, peddlers shouldering their poles as they slunk down every street. Practically everyone had poured out of their homes. Even more unfortunate was that, on his arrival, dark clouds covered the moon. Without the support of sun or moonlight, the chance his plan would fail greatly increased. Anxious about the odds, Shen Tsingtio decided to wait for the time being. At most one day, if after that day the clouds had yet to disperse, he couldn't afford to care any more. If the chance of failure remained greater, so be it. A risk would still be better than clinging to an over-ripe sun-moon dew-mushroom and crying about it. At that point, even if it was cooked and served with alcohol, it would just reek of fertilizer. As Xian Tsingzhou walked cautiously, he occasionally bumped into rowdy children or brushed past groups of laughing girls, and he felt, very slightly, that it really was a pity. If he weren't currently fleeing for his life, he would have liked to take a thorough tour of the city. Suddenly several men, all dressed in clothes of the same colour, were walking towards him, long swords slung over their backs. Each one held his head high and his chest out. From a glance one could tell they were arrogant disciples from a random sect. Though it sounded strange, the smaller and more random the sect, the more afraid their disciples would be that others didn't know they were cultivators. If they could have gotten away with it, they would have emblazoned their clothes with huge slogans. Shen Tsingzhou turned his body in a neutral manner, and smoothly picked up a demon mask from the side. He placed it over his face, then, openly and confidently, walked towards them. At the festival six out of ten attendees were wearing masks. If he mixed in with them, he didn't have to fear drawing attention. Shi Xiong, would that Xu Ya sword really sit around in this city waiting to be captured? one man from the group asked. The four sects sent out the warrant for his capture as one. How could it be fake? the leader berated him. Don't you see how many sects have sent people here to box him in? Keep an eye out. You saw Huan Hua Palace's bounty too, don't you want it? Myriad thoughts filled Shan Tsing Tsio's mind. It turned out that, without his knowledge, he'd become a wanted criminal. It's no wonder Huan Hua Palace put down such a large sum. What happened to them was really just awful. The most I did was to knock out an insignificant disciple, Shen Tsing Chou thought. I didn't do anything else. So how did Huan Hua Palace suddenly become the tragic victim? He wanted to keep listening, but they pulled further and further ahead, and the rush of people cut him off so he could only give up. While he was mulling over whether he should find an abandoned residence to rest, he felt a sudden weight upon his leg, and when he looked down he saw a small child clinging to his thigh. The child unhurriedly raised his head. His face was pallid, like he was malnourished, but his eyes were both large and bright. They stared straight at Shen Tsing Chou as the boy clung to his thigh, unwilling to let go. Shen Tsing Chou patted his head. "'Who's your family? Did you get lost?' The small child nodded, and when he spoke his voice was meek and sweet. I got lost. The child's appearance was naturally endearing, and it even seemed a little familiar, so Shen Tsing Tio leaned over to pick him up, letting him sit on his arm. Who did you come here with? The child clung to his neck and pursed his lips. With Chu Tsun. Was he some sect's young disciple? Then, if a grown-up came to look for him, Shen Tsing Chiu was in for a real headache. But for some reason the forlorn way the boy said Chu Tsun stirred Shen Tsing Chiu's pity down to the core. He couldn't harden his heart and toss the child to the side of the road, leading him to continue huddling miserably. He patted the boy's soft little behind. Your Shu Tsun didn't look after you properly. How incredibly awful of him! Where did you get lost? Do you remember? The child giggled into his ear. I remember. Shih Tsun personally threw me down himself, so how could I not? Half of Shen Tsing Zhou's body went utterly cold. It was as if what he held in his arms wasn't the body of a young child, but a poisonous snake. A massive snake that had wound around his neck and bared its fangs, poised to bite and inject venom into him at any moment. He abruptly threw aside the person in his arms and turned around. 
his back covered in goosebumps. The fine hairs all over his body promptly stood straight up. The entire street was looking at him. The ones wearing masks, the ones not wearing masks. It was like they were suddenly all immobilized, holding their breaths and watching him. The ones wearing masks were frightening with their sinister and demonic visages, but the ones not wearing masks were even more panic inducing. They didn't have faces. Xian Jingzhou's instinct in that second was to place his hand on Chu Ya, but he shortly caught himself. He couldn't attack. This was what he'd once taught Luo Binghe, while within Meng Mo's barrier, to attack the people who appeared in the dream realm was in fact to attack your own self. Cold sweat dripped from Shan Tsing Tzu's forehead. He had wholly, completely failed to realize that he'd entered this barrier. To be fair, people never remembered when and how exactly a dream began. But he'd been fleeing. Surely he hadn't been so dull-witted as to fall asleep on the side of the road while running for his life. From behind him there came a tender voice. Shu Tsun. Moments ago, when this voice had been by his ear, it had sounded clearly and utterly adorable and innocent. But when he listened to it now, it actually possessed some unspeakably terrifying quality. Why don't you want me any more? The child form of Luo Binghe asked faintly from where he stood behind Shen Qingzhou. Shen Qingzhou decisively refused to turn his head and immediately took off. He said that all these faceless people were watching him. No, he couldn't call it watching, because they didn't even have eyes. But their faces still turned in Shen Qingzhou's direction, and he could indeed feel the weight of countless gazes upon him. Shen Qingzhou pretended he couldn't see any of this and charged straight ahead, thrusting aside anyone in his way. Suddenly a hand intercepted his palm. He turned his head to look. Though this hand was slim, it possessed terrifying strength, basically like an iron shackle. A fourteen-year-old Luo Binghe firmly gripped his wrist. On his face was not only the bruising that had never been allowed to heal, but an overflowing melancholy. Those pitch-black eyes stared right at him, almost within reach. You're still coming? Shen Tsingchou tried three times before he finally flung off Luo Binghe, then pushed aside the crowd and continued to flee. First was a child, second was a youth. If the adult version came next, he really wouldn't be able to take it. But this street seemed to go on forever, with no end in sight. After a sequence of small stalls on either side, faceless playing children and demon-masked girls appeared a second time. Xian Tsingchou was finally certain. This dream realm street was looping, going forward was fruitless. Since neither forward nor backward would work, he'd blaze a different trail— Shen Qingzhou looked left and right, then darted up to a liquor shop. Crimson lanterns hung high over the shop's doors, the red glow muted and beautiful, yet the wooden doors were tightly shut. Shen Qingzhou pulled open the doors and had just walked inside when they slammed closed by themselves. The interior of the house was dark, and a cold breeze blew through it. Rather than being inside of a liquor shop, it felt more like he'd entered a cave— Xian Tsingzhou didn't think this unexpected. Dream realms couldn't be understood using common sense. Every door had the potential to lead anywhere. At this moment a series of eerie noises drifted to his ear. They sounded like the intensely laboured, incessant panting of a person close to death, whose lungs had been punctured, who was in terrible agony. Moreover, it didn't sound like only one person— Xian Qingzhou snapped his fingers, flicking a flame forth from his fingertips, and aimed it towards the origin of those strange noises. The flame illuminated the scene in its entirety, leaving out not a single detail. His pupils instantly shrank to pinpoints. Liu Chinga held Cheng Luang. The blade aimed at himself and was stabbing it into his own chest. His body was stained with blood, Large swathes covered with a deep and ghastly red. The wounds weren't just concentrated in one place, and a stream of blood flowed from the corner of his mouth. It looked like he'd already stabbed himself with the sword who knew how many times. Yet his expression was both furious and crazed. It was obvious he was delirious in the midst of a chi deviation. Beneath the rays of dim yellow firelight this picture was exceptionally horrifying— Shen Tsingchou momentarily forgot that this was still the dream realm and threw himself forward, wrenching Cheng Luan away. 
The sword had been staked in the centre of Liu Chinga's heart, and with only a light touch from Shen Ting Chiu, fresh blood spurted violently forth, filling his vision with red. At that, Shen Ting Chiu's mind cleared a little, and he backed up two steps, only to bump into another person. He jerked his head around. Yue Ching Yuan's head was lowered, gaze meeting his. Though their gazes met, those two eyes were empty and devoid of light. From his throat to his chest, his four limbs and abdomen were all pierced with a forest of pitch-black arrows. Pierced with ten thousand arrows? All at once, Shen Ting Chiu understood the meaning of these visions. These were their original deaths, the deaths he had been meant to cause with his own hands. Shen Ting Chiu couldn't stand it any more. He far preferred being outside getting aggressively stared down by a circle of faceless people to this sort of thing. He backed up in the direction from which he'd come, and he managed to brush those wooden doors. Feeling as if he'd been granted amnesty, Shen Ting Chiu kicked the doors open and rushed outside. His mind was a mess, his footsteps confused as he tripped and staggered along, cutting a rather sorry figure. Every person on the street watched him in deathly silence, and while he was disorientated he crashed headlong into someone's chest. That person's hands swiftly came around to his back, gathering him into their arms. The other party was a little taller than him, slender and willowy, dressed in clothes as black as ink, that exposed only a fair neck. Above that, a sinister mask covered their face. Shen Ting Chiu hadn't yet spoken when a smiling voice came from above. Should Sun be careful? He had no need to lift the mask to know whose face lay underneath. At once, Shen Ting Chiu began to struggle. The other party didn't hold him by force, so getting free wasn't difficult. Only after retreating several steps and maintaining a safe distance did he right himself. You created this city? Shen Ting Chiu asked. Luo Binghe casually removed the mask. His expression looked like he was sad that he couldn't keep playing hide-and-seek. Correct. What does Shi Tsun think? Shen Ting Chiu slowly nodded. You truly deserve to be called Meng Mo's succeeding disciple. To be able to create an illusion this detailed, he feared it was nearly as good as the city Meng Mo had created to trap them in all those years ago, Furthermore, it had so accurately grasped his lurking fears. Originally, Luo Binghe's mood had seemed rather good, but on hearing these words, the smile on his lips faded. I'm not Meng Mo's disciple. Didn't you accept him as your master? Shen Xing Zhou asked, slightly curious. Luo Binghe held his silence for a while before he answered in a peeved tone. I didn't. All right, then. If he didn't, he didn't. Shen Xing Chiu didn't think there was any point wasting time on this. Shi Tsun, if you are willing to return of your own volition, you can ask for anything, Luo Binghe said. Are you offering a plea bargain? asked Shen Xing Chiu. So long as I don't dissolve the blood mites within your body, it will be futile to flee. Oh, is that so? he smiled. Then, right now, why haven't you personally come to catch me? Luo Binghe stiffened, sparks flashing in his eyes. At this reaction, Shen Xing Chiu became even more sure. "'Something's gone wrong with that sword of yours, right?' he asked languidly. "'The heavens smile down upon me.' After falling into the endless abyss, while within the stomach of a huge ancient beast, Luo Binghe had found a mythical sword that had been forged by a master demon blacksmith, with an entire lifetime's worth of painstaking labour. This sword was called Shin Mo, Heart Demon. The name alone tells you that it's something super dangerous, right? And that was a must. The stronger the spiritual artefact, the harder it was to control. Since ancient times, Shin Mo had passed through the hands of more than a hundred masters, and all had been blessed geniuses from various races— Yet despite this, none of them had been able to escape the same fate, and they had all died to this very blade, their own sword. Shin Mo lashed back against its wielder. 
If you could make it submit, it was a formidable weapon in your hand. But if one day you were unable to control the sword's evil tendencies, you would become no more than another blood sacrifice to its hunger. Only after starting the Demon Realm arc had the original Loa Binghe gone through his first bout of internal struggles, wherein he narrowly escaped Shin Mo's recoil. After that, for the sake of solving this problem, he'd begun a side plot that lasted five hundred chapters, and involved collecting eight or nine more girls. But right now, with the plot in disarray, it seemed the recoil incident had also moved earlier. Shin Mo's recoil was no joke. No wonder Luo Binga hadn't given chase. He was busy secluding himself to recover, so he was unable to capture Shen Qingqiu in person. Suddenly, Luo Binga grabbed Shen Qingqiu's shoulder and forcefully yanked. Rip! Why, again? Luo Binga's face was almost as dark as the bottom of a pot. Each word he spat out sounded like he'd first ground it between his teeth. Even if I can't come in person for now, Shitsun shouldn't be too happy. That doesn't mean you should tear my clothes. Shen Qingqiu clutched the remaining fabric tightly and indignantly and said, What are you doing? Is this your only method of humiliating others? It was clearly Shitsun who humiliated me first. Satisfaction points plus fifty. You can add points for that too. Gross! Why does this feel so sick? When Luo Bingha's hand exerted force, the white robe's fabric disintegrated into pieces, drifting away in the wind. His anger still unappeased, he pressed towards Shen Qingqiu. His expression made Shen Qingqiu fear that there would be no end to this. He'd never known Luo Bingha to have crazy clothes-ripping tendencies. But, of course, he couldn't just sit there and resign himself to it. They exchanged ten or so blows, quick and nimble. Luo Bingha could obviously easily assume the upper hand, but, like a cat playing with a mouse, he patiently engaged Shen Qingqiu in close combat. Shen Qingqiu's movements were swift, but it seemed that in Luo Bingha's eyes he was always one step behind. When he lashed out with a palm strike, Luo Bingha evaded within a hair's breadth every time, calm and unhurried. Then, as if reciprocating a polite gesture, he perfunctory returned the blow. On top of that, the system was being extremely annoying, with satisfaction point notifications ringing without end. Plus twenty, plus thirty, plus fifty, etc. The infernal racket flooded Shen Qingqiu's brain. After several back and forths, it was Shen Qingqiu's turn to wear a dark face. Where are you aiming? Are you messing with me? Shouldn't the goal of a fight be defeating the other party? This wasn't a fight. This couldn't even be considered sparring. It was basically harassment. As he thought this, Shen Qingqiu's concentration slipped and he used too much force, falling into Luo Bingha. This Luo Bingha didn't evade at all, and he let Shen Qingqiu crash into his arms with a thud. His voice carried laughter, like his mood had risen once more. Shitsun taught me this manoeuvre himself. When it comes to force, there's a time for restraint and a time for release, and one must, above all else, avoid losing one's balance. How could you forget that yourself? At this moment, Shen Qingqiu's mind was bombarded with a colourful explosion of little beast ad nauseum. Motherfucker! This manoeuvre really was something he'd taught Luo Bingha. He still remembered the lesson. Not long after Luo Bingha had moved out of the woodshed, though he was blessed with shitloads of raw talent, and had come up with a fighting style through random experimentation, other than the handful of cutting and stabbing manoeuvres every new disciple knew, he knew absolutely jack shit about any higher level techniques. After watching him practice a series of sword, palm and foot techniques, Shen Qingzhou had held his forehead for a long time while Luo Binghe awaited his evaluation by his side, as anxious as he was nervous. Shen Qingzhou had been unable to bear hurting him, and after a long while had finally squeezed out a single line. Pragmatic and quite flexible. In the name of correcting Luo Binghe's more tragic habits, Shen Qingzhou had put in a great deal of painstaking effort and given him daily private instruction. 
he had been unable to understand why a nudge wasn't enough. Given Luo Bingha's intelligence and comprehension, Shen Xingqiu shouldn't have needed to tell him anything more than once. But in reality, Luo Bingha was incredibly stubborn. He would immediately forget his lessons no matter how tirelessly taught, and always used too much force. He had slammed into Shen Xingqiu's arms who knew how many times, until Shen Xingqiu finally became quite angry. Are you doing this on purpose? Unable to help himself, he had slapped the back of Luo Bingha's head, neither heavy nor light, and shouted, How is this anticipating and defending against your enemy? You're basically throwing yourself into their arms. Only after this did Luo Bingha, face fully flushed, finally start practicing in earnest. He would no longer dare to make mistakes so carelessly. But in the present, Luo Bingha was the one lecturing Shen Tingzhou on his incorrect stance. What nonsense is this? Shen Xingqiu felt like his dignity as a master had been challenged. He was about to counterattack when Luo Bingha's hand trailed downward, following the line of his spine. Goosebumps exploded down Shen Xingqiu's back in its wake. Luo Bingha, he said through clenched teeth. Satisfaction points plus one hundred. Congratulations! Congratulations, my ass! Luo Bingha again plucked away a length of shredded white cloth. Seeing Shitsun in this robe makes me awfully unhappy. It would be better to rip it all off. Doesn't that mean he won't stop until I'm one hundred percent naked? Even if you hate me, there's no need to take it out on this robe, Shen Qingqiu said. Moreover, it's Gong Yi Shao's. Luo Bingha's face fell. Shizun is the one who truly hates me. You're unwilling to associate with even a scrap of my clothing. Why? Why were two grown men neurotically discussing a piece of clothing while surrounded by staring eyes? Luo Bingha, are you actually the sensitive type? I even patted your robe clean and folded it for you. What more do you want? Can't be that you wanted me to hand wash and return it to you personally. Shen Qingqiu thought his expressions shifting erratically. What is Shizun thinking? Luo Bingha asked at the sight. He added coolly, If it's about Gong Yi Shao, let me advise Shizun. You needn't think about him any more. An ominous feeling rose in Shen Ting Cho's heart, and he asked in a forceful voice, What happened to Gong Yi Shao? Plot wise, Gong Yi Shao, being banished, forced to defend a desolate regional border, and deprived of any future prospects, was only supposed to happen after Luo Bingha and the little palace mistress slept together. But now the plot was jumbled to the point where, even aeroplane shooting towards the sky, the story's own father would no longer recognize it. So naturally, any scenario could have moved up. Shen Qingqiu had yet to hear Luo Bingha's answer when the faceless people nearby stirred. Originally, they had only vacantly stood there watching blankly as if they were mentally infirm or doing their own thing. Now they started to steadily gather around him. Shen Qingqiu was squeezed into the center of the crowd, but he couldn't directly blast them away. He looked again towards Luo Bingha, whose brows were tightly furrowed, hand pressed to his temple, too preoccupied to notice anything else. As if he were enduring a mental assault. Shen Qingqiu had a sudden epiphany. In all likelihood, Shin Mo had taken the chance to lash out and was trying to strike at Luo Bingha's mind. As Luo Bingha could no longer spare the energy to maintain the barrier, the dream realm was beginning to fall into chaos. If Shen Qingqiu didn't leave now, then when would he get the chance? If Luo Bingha couldn't expend any attention to stop him, so long as Shen Qingqiu faced another illusion and overcame the related fears buried within his heart, he would be able to destroy this failing barrier. Just like that, Shen Qingqiu left. Luo Bingha's head hurt like it was splitting open, but he was unable to move. He could only yell, I dare you to take another step. Shen Qingqiu took ten steps. Afterward, he turned his head. How's that? Luo Bingha looked like he was about to cough up blood. He ground out each word one by one. You just wait and see. Chen Qingqiu's gaze didn't falter. He spoke coldly and loftily. Goodbye. You think I'll wait just because you told me to? I'm not an idiot. To the side, Chen Qingqiu glimpsed another shop. 
he kicked open the doors and leapt through them. Whatever appeared this time, he was absolutely certain he could face it calmly. At the very least, his chance of success was higher than when facing Loa Bingha. The doors closed behind him, and it was like the clamour of outside had been severed away by a sharp knife. Within a split second, all was deathly quiet. Shen Xingjiu held his breath and waited soundless. After a long while, it was as if someone had lit a candle, and his surroundings slowly flickered, lightening. Shen Xingjiu looked down, and he came face to face with a countenance that was both foreign and familiar. Before him knelt a frail-looking youth. The boy wore coarse clothes and was crouched bent on the ground. It was a crestfallen pose, and his hands were tightly tied with thick, rough rope. Though his face was deathly pale, his eyes were full of life. Shen Qingzhou met his gaze unwavering. This categorically wasn't Shen Qingzhou's memory, but this face was indeed exactly like his. The only thing it was missing was the polish of time and cultivation. Instead, it possessed the inexperience of youth. This was Shen Qingzhou, yet it wasn't Shen Qingzhou. If he had to be obvious about it, this was Shen Jiu. Shen Xingqiu abruptly sat up on a wooden slab. After startling awake, he took in his surroundings, and only then did he realize that he was lying within an abandoned residence. The sky was already bright, white light streaming through the worn-out window and cracks in the rice paper. Then he remembered. The night before, he'd wandered at random through the festival. And not long into his wonder, had really found an old, uninhabited house. He'd originally only intended to rest a little, but by accident had carelessly fallen asleep, allowing Luo Bingha to catch him within the dream realm. As Shen Qingzhou considered the illusion he'd just seen before the dream realm collapsed, he couldn't help but sink into thought. Though his and the original flavor's souls counted as two different people, in the end he was using someone else's body. So it made sense that there would be at least some influence from the prior owner. What he'd seen in the dream had likely been the original Shen Jiu's childhood memories. In a way, then he'd cheated his way out, because those memories had absolutely no hold on the current Shen Xing Jiu. Thus, he had been able to easily and effortlessly break free of them. Although, in retrospect, Shen Xing Jiu thought this fairly suspicious. The Shen Jiu within his dream had been tied up. So he assumed it was a memory from the time when Shen Jiu was still held by human traffickers. However, he'd been in a room decorated with soft carpet, numerous cabinets for keeping valuables, and the walls hung with calligraphy, which lent it a noble air. It hadn't looked like a criminal's den, but rather had unquestionably been a rich man's study. In other words, it looked like Shen Jiu had not been as doted upon in the Chiu estate as Chiu Hai Tang claimed. Shen Qingzhou hopped up from the bare wooden couch and unconsciously felt upon his form. At least all his clothes were still there, but even though his clothes were intact, he didn't really want to wear them any more. Though they were on his body, he had an ominous feeling that they could be ripped off at any moment. Before he'd gone too far through the streets, Shen Qingzhou discovered that more than a few people had poured into Hua Yue City upon receiving notice of the warrant for his capture. Though many of the cultivators put on an act and didn't wear their sect colours while disguised as common people, when they sat down at roadside stands, their postures were entirely different from ordinary persons. Shen Qingzhou felt it was too dangerous to go as he was, so he found a corner, smeared his face with dirt, and haphazardly stuck on some whiskers. After making all these preparations, he carefully returned to the street. When he glanced up at the sky, he saw that the clouds were thin, like they were slowly retreating. If nothing went awry, noon today would be the optimal time. When he looked down again, a slender, snow-white silhouette flashed through the crowd in front of him, fast and light, their profile outstandingly handsome. Liu Chinga, his hired thug, was here. Shen Qingzhou's eyes brightened, but just as he was about to chase after Liu Chinga. A delicate shout erupted from a nearby tavern. "What are you saying with your filthy mouth?" This voice was clear, delicate, and extremely familiar. Shen Qingzhou unconsciously paused mid-step, the scene drawing his gaze. 
Right afterward, a sequence of crashes shook the air, and all the passers-by glanced as well. At this time, another young woman humphed and said spitefully, "What, you have the guts for crime, but won't let others talk? No wonder Tsang Chong Mountain produced a degenerate like Shen Ting Chiu. Every one in the sect must be eager to bury their shame, especially Qing Jing Peak." <laughs> Unfortunately for you, every one knows what kind of a thing he is. You think you can hide it? What a venomous tone! The young woman who'd spoken first jumped in to refute her right away. Shih Tsun absolutely isn't that kind of person who'd do something like this. Don't you dare slander him! What young girl would even now speak up for him so? Who could it be other than Ning Ying Ying? Ming Fan's voice carried into the street as well. We were only polite to you out of respect for the old palace master. You ought to be more polite as well. Though Shen Xingqiu had wanted to go look for Liu Qingge, having urgent matters to tend to, this strange atmosphere made him hesitate for a second. In the end, afraid the Qingjing Peak disciples would be at a disadvantage, he stayed for a moment and ducked to the side of the building to hide and watch. There were two distinct camps in this tavern. One side was led by Ming Fang and Ning Ying Ying, while a crowd of Qing Jing Peak disciples stood behind them, their every face filled with displeasure. The little palace mistress stood in front of the other side, her hands on her hips as she faced her opponents with a cold scowl. The Huan Hua palace disciples behind her had already flashed their blades, their glares even more full of fury. Two young women, one lovely and delicate, the other with gorgeous features, gracefully faced off. Even if the air was filled with crackling, sizzling sparks, the scene was still incomparably easy on the eye. Luo Binghe was setting fires in his backyard again. No, even Qing Jing Peak's disciples were involved, and they had challenged Huan Hua Palace. This was the real enemies meeting on a narrow road. Shen Ting Chiu could guarantee that if he left this scene and walked away right this instant, Qing Jing Peak would definitely suffer more casualties and greatly. Remember, this little palace mistress was domineering to the point that other than Luo Binghe, there was no one in the world she wouldn't dare hit. Injury and crippling strikes were common dishes on her menu of retaliation. The little palace mistress humphed. Not that kind of person. Then tell me why would he flee in fear of punishment? And he, he, he did that sort of thing. As she spoke, she clenched her teeth in hatred. The rim of her eyes going red. Shih Tsun was never convicted. What do you mean, flee in fear of punishment? Ning Ying Ying shot back. And there's still no final consensus on who committed those deeds. Ah, Tsang Chong Mountain never blamed your Huan Hua Palace for being gullible and overly suspicious, or for insisting on imprisoning our Qing Jing Peak's Peak Lord in your water prison without regard for the truth. If not for you, things wouldn't have blown up into the situation today. The reason for this bitch fight wasn't the male lead, but Shen Ting Chiu. Shen Ting Chiu wiped his brow. By what merit does this humble Shen deserve this? At the same time, the dark cloud over his heart that he'd been unable to wipe away grew even darker. This argument just made it more evident that after he left, something had happened at Huan Hua Palace, and these new grudges and old debts had all fallen on his head. The little palace mistress flew into a rage, though to tell the truth, Shan Ting Chou felt that she was always in a state of rage. So you're saying that our Huan Hua Palace only has ourselves to blame? She snapped. Ah, Tsang Chong Mountain is so impressive, so high up and domineering, so arrogant and unbridled, that not only do you refuse to apologise, you have the gall to be so brazen towards the victims. With this kind of behaviour, you still have the face to call yourself Number One Major Sect. Preposterous! Ning Ying Ying curled her lip. Tang Chong Mountain has already been acknowledged by the masses as the number one major sect. Whether you accept that fact doesn't matter. Moreover, who came at us first and acted brazen? Our Qingjing Peak was eating a perfectly peaceful meal in this tavern. 
And what's your justification for coming up and cursing us out, first saying you want our whole Qingjing peak to kneel to you, cow tow and apologize for our offenses, and then say that our entire Sangchong mountain should be buried together, exactly who was being preposterous? Hua Yue City is not your Huanhua Palace's backyard. Or are you saying that the entire world is your house? Ning Ying Ying's voice was delicate and crisp, and Shen Ting Chou was flabbergasted to hear it. How had the innocent, naive, and silly Ying Ying become so good at cat fights? And why was the little palace mistress acting like a beast not properly leashed in her cage, biting at every one she laid eyes on? Our Qing Jing Peak has always cleaved to etiquette, Ning Ying Ying continued. Shi Tsun was a proper teacher, and said not to bicker with foul-mouthed little children. This is the only reason we have tolerated you thus far. Are you finished? If you are, then leave. Don't get in the way of our meal. I can't eat while looking at your face. After she spoke, she picked up a cup of tea from the table and splashed it at the other girl's feet. The little palace mistress didn't dodge fast enough, and a few drops of tea splashed the hem of her dress. You! she screeched. You shrew! Ming Fang couldn't take it any more. Throwing aside his chopsticks, he sneered, "'Don't think we're afraid of you just because you're the old palace master's daughter. After all, you're just a little girl relying on her daddy. Neither your seniority nor your cultivation are worth anything, though when it comes to your ability to annoy, you're first rate. Shrew, the way I see it, you're a bigger shrew than anyone else here. You've lost every last shred of Huan Hua Palace's face.' Shen Qing Chiu was shocked. Ching Jing Peak's disciples had always been so meek in front of him, they wouldn't even dare fart. If he told them to feed the chickens, they'd dare not walk dogs too. If he told them to make rice, they'd dare not make congee. Yet it turned out they were actually quite the smack talkers when let loose. The little palace mistress's face went white with anger. She'd heard Ching Wan Yue say that this soft, bewitching little girl had been sect siblings with Luo Bingha for many years as well as childhood friends and innocent playmates. All at once envy and hatred flowed forth from her, and she suddenly raised her hand, a black shadow shooting out from her sleeve like a poisonous snake. Fuck, she has a new whip. When the other customers in the tavern saw that, it was finally coming to blows, they left at top speed. Although, as they passed Shen Ting Chiu, their expressions were unperturbed, like this was nothing strange. It seemed that the residents of Hua Yue City had long since grown accustomed to this sort of scene. The waiter even adeptly stuck a bill on the post before he walked out. The little palace mistress was the old palace master's beloved daughter. Her martial skills were the product of his hands-on teaching, and her weapons were far from ordinary in quality. The whips strike swift and fierce. Meanwhile, Ning Ying Ying was the beloved youngest Shimei, who was pampered by the entirety of Qingjing Peak. She very rarely encountered danger, and had virtually no real battle experience. Her sword waved back and forth, and though she warded off the attacks, a keen eye could see she was having trouble. For his part, Ming Fang wanted to aid her, but he couldn't get past the circle of the Iron Whip's dance and could only fret helplessly. Shen Ting Chiu assessed the situation, then casually plucked a green leaf from the flower-pot by his foot, which he sent flying. The fragile green leaf was filled with spiritual energy. When it collided with the iron whip, there was a piercing crash of something hard on metal. The little palace mistress was unable to see what had gone wrong, but she felt the space between her finger and thumb go numb before her whip slipped from her hand and flew away. Ning Ying Ying also started— She'd been about to meet another attack with her sword, but once she saw that the little palace mistress had no weapon with which to block, she hurriedly pulled back, afraid of really stabbing her. But the little palace mistress had no similar mercy, and her reaction was supremely fast. The second her weapon left her hand, she reversed the momentum of her arm to turn it into a slap. A smack! Ning Ying Ying held her face, her head turned to the side. Fuck! The five fingerprints standing out on Ning Ying Ying's face, and the cheek already swollen on one side, went to show that the attack had been utterly ruthless. Shen Ching Tso's heart ached in terrible distress. You dare hit a disciple who even I've never touched? 
However, at the sight of Ning Ying Ying's pretty face made lopsided, one side swollen, one side smooth, and all over tremendously unsightly, the little palace mistress was enormously satisfied, and felt she had vented her resentment. She rubbed her wrist, raised her chin, and laughed. If your Shih Tzu won't teach you, then let this palace mistress do it. Lesson one. One must consider propriety when speaking. Who the fuck are you teaching my disciples in my place? Ming Fang drew his sword. You bitch, you've gone too far. Let's go all out. The Qing Jing Peak disciples couldn't take it any longer. Their youngest, Shi Mei, had been hit. How could they just let that go? They yelled and drew their swords, their blades gleaming with dazzling light. Shen Ting Chiu was trying to figure out how to teach the little palace mistress a lesson without inciting greater bloodshed or exposing his location as quickly as possible, when he suddenly noticed that within the crowd of Huan Hua palace disciples, one person was behaving most strangely and suspiciously. Shen Ting Chiu observed that person for a few seconds, after which his heart thumped. Not good, he thought silently. It would no longer be so easy to slip away.